Good morning and welcome back. Now today's video is going to be all about dreaded orange spots or DOS as we nicknamed it in the soap making circles. We're going to look at what is DOS, why does it form and how can we maybe prevent it. So those are the three things that we're going to quickly cover here. Now first things first, let's look at what is DOS. And do you have DOS in your soap or is it maybe something else? Now if you are making soap and um, the spots develop in the first few days, then it is most probably not dreaded orange spots. Dreaded orange spots tends to start to develop from week 4 or onwards and even quite li later than that. Um, so it happens later on. If you develop um, spots early in your soap making um, or early in the curing, then usually it is your fragrance oil that is discoloring your soap. Um, especially if you use something that is vanilla fragrance. The vanillin in soap um, tends to turn so brown, so if you normally that will happen evenly, um, it will not be in, in spots. If it makes spots, then it might have been that you didn't um, stir in your fragrance oil completely or properly, and then it might make spots as well. So um, it can be fragrance oil. So let's see what is dreaded orange spots. Now, dreaded orange spots is when the uh, super fat in your, in your soap turns rancid. Now, super fat for the guys that are new to soap making, that is the extra fat or oils that we use in our recipe formulation, um, just to make sure that it um, moisturizes your skin a little bit or that it's not too drying. So, obviously, your super fat are extra fat, so they are not saponified there. And um, if you are using an old oil from the start, then your chances um, for dust does increase because the oils already are on the point where they're going to go rancid. So make sure that you are using um, good fresh oils, um, good quality fresh oils in your soap when you are soap making. And okay, the next thing we're going to look at um, the fatty acid profiles in your oils. Um, there are certain oils that do have uh, a tendency to develop uh, red orange spots or rancidity earlier or easier. Those are the guys that are high in linoleic and linolenic acids. And also that's got a high IAD number. So it's usually your um, unsaturated fatty acids that tends to give you a little bit more trouble than others. Okay, to find the information I'm going to show you in the soap making calculator, where to find the information regarding the iodine and the linoleic and linolenic acids. Now the linoleic and linolenics, the sum of those two, you want to keep it below 15%. If you go over 15%, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's not to say that you are definitely going to get rancidity in your soap, um, but it increases the chances for that quite significantly. So it's good to keep your eye on that, but I'm going to show you where to find that information. Okay, the other thing is good quality water. The reason why water is so important is um, the moment when there are metals present in your water, um, then the oils go rancid much easier as well. So um, make sure you are using water that does not have any metals in it. Now, waters that you can use, some people do use well water or even municipal water without any problems. Lucky for you guys, you've got a good quality water source there. But if you don't know what quality water you can obtain from your municipal water or so on, rather go buy some water. Now, options that you do have is uh, distilled water. Um, you can do reverse osmosis water all quite good. I've been using reverse osmosis water for many, many years now. There are going to be people that can tell you use distilled water and nothing else. Now, where I live, um, distilled water are quite expensive um, for me to buy. Um, to, to give an idea, um, in South Africa, if you buy a liter of distilled water, it's around about 20 rand a liter, where reverse osmosis water is going to cost me one rand a liter. So um, distilled wood is 20 times more expensive and um, yes, many people will say, you know, 20 rand is maybe not that much. For me, it eventually counts up. So it does make a difference and I get exactly the same quality soap if I use reverse osmosis water or if I'm using distilled water. For me, reverse osmosis is it. So because we need to make some money around here somewhere as well. <laughs> okay. Um, the other thing is, is rainwater. You can collect rainwater. If you are staying in a place that does not have a lot of uh, air pollution and so on, then your rainwater might be quite nice and clean. Um, it should be without any metals then in, in any way. So just make sure that there's no metals present. Okay, and that brings me to the other way um, of so you're storing your, uh, your soap. If you are storing your soap on a metal rack, 
um, then you might find that you get these little orange stripes underneath. Okay, so it's going to be your um, orange spots, but you're going to get lines showing. And I'm still busy struggling with all the flies around here. Um, we are moving within a month. <laughs> then we're away from all this, all these flies around here. Hopefully, I don't know. We go, <laughs> we we're moving to a game farm. There might be even more flies, but I I, I really highly <laughs> doubt it. But anyhow, so back to your soap. So it will make little lines there. So that is where it touches the metal. Um, you can still use your metal racks to store your soap on. Just make sure that you line it with some freezer paper and so on, so that your soap does not touch it directly. Okay, so that is your storing. Other thing with storing, sorry, the last one. Um, high humidity. I found one day that I, I made a batch of soap, a huge batch, and some of them were stored in one room, some of them were stored in another room. And the one batch the developed dose and the others didn't. And it was exactly the same batch of oils, the same water, the same everything. And um, after being baffled for quite some time, I realized, you know what, the batch that was um, developing dose was standing right next to my ironing board where we um, used the iron on steam. So the steam around there just raised the humidity quite a lot and it was being used basically daily on that that stage so um, my the water could not evaporate fast enough out of my soap so um, with my curing it doesn't didn't cure the way it should cure and uh, um, even if you think about it like this if you take a bottle of oil and there's a little bit of water that goes in there it goes runs it much faster than a bottle of clean oil that does not contain any water in it so we do make soap with water, um, that's the part of the curing is to, to just evaporate the water out of it. So if you are in an environment where it can't really evaporate and it, it stays moist all the time, then chances for dose also increases there as well. Okay, but let me show you in the soap making calculator where you can find the information regarding the linoleic and linolenic and the iodine and so on. So then you can use that information as well to make sure that your um, uh, recipe is formulated in such a way that it reduces your chances of dose so yeah let me just quickly show you that okay we are we going to find this information in a soap making calculator now I'm going to use soapmakingfriend.com this is my preferred calculator that I like to use um, if you're new to it you will have to um, open up an account there that is going to be a username and uh, email address and you're going to choose a password I can promise you that I'm not going to spam you with um, all kinds of emails and stuff so you are safe in that regard. Okay and then you're going to click on recipes and you're going to pick new recipe. Now in this one I already started something. I just chose canola oil, coconut oil and shea butter. Um, this is underneath the oils, fats and waxes under number 5 here. You will see that you've got a whole range of oils here. Um, to add it to your recipe, you're going to click on the plus and to get the information, you can hover over the information but then you will see here on the right hand side that the information kind of shows double. So if you click on the eye, it's just going to open up underneath the well and then you can read it nice and easily. Okay, but I'm not going to use the obsidian oil, I'm going to use canola oil. So let's go and check out canola. So here we've got canola, I already clicked on it, opened it up. And here we can get all the information regarding canola oil. <laughs> okay, let's just quickly get yes. Okay, first things first. Here is your iodine. Your iodine is 110, which is actually quite high. Linoleic and your linolenic, 21 and 9. So this is already 30 here. So we don't want the um, sum of these two, um, of them, we don't want it uh, more than 15. We, we prefer it to be 15 or less. If it's 16 or 17, not a crazy big issue, but um, then you are just going to be a little bit more prone to develop dose there. So this is where you're going to find the information for each and every well here. So what I've done here is I just um, made a little recipe here. Let's go for 50% there. And um, 25, and we make this one 25 as well. You need to have your um, recipe uh, totals, yeah, 100%. Otherwise, it's not going to 
give you the information. So you see there, the totals here yeah, needs to be 100%. Um, otherwise, it's not going to open this up on the right hand side. So let me show you the moment when I make it 26, then it disappears on this side. So you need them to count up there. Okay, so now you can go back to the top of the page. Here you can see this is the percentages that I've used in the oils. You can go back down, then you get the recipe totals. Now here is one of the pieces of information that I didn't really spoke about yet. And this is your saturated and saturated fats. Um, if you get it to 50-50, then automatically your iodine is going to be very close to um, the right amount. And your um, uh, linoleic, linoleic acids will be the correct amount. So this is also an indication where you can look at it. Um, you would want it about 50-50, equal amounts, saturated, unsaturated. Um, if you have more saturated fats, then it's going to be a harder sub and it's going to be even less prone um, to, to develop DOS. So that is one of the parts. Then you can go a little bit lower. Here is your iodine. This is your iodine amount. It is 73. And you see you want it actually a little bit less than 70. Yeah. So... Um, it's a little bit over, so we are going to adjust the recipe just now. Okay, and then your linoleic and linoleic acids. Um, here are the two of them together. Oops. Here are your linoleic and linoleic. And if you see here, if you count them together, they are on 19%. So 19% is a bit high. Okay, how to fix this? You can adjust the amount or the, the percentages in your oils. Shea butter, if you go and you check it out, um, canola oil, we saw that this is one of the ones that are very high, likely to um, develop those in high amounts. So we want to reduce the canola oil. And let's go for 25 there. Uh, leave the coconut oil 20 and let's make this one 50. Just for interest here. Yeah. Then the moment when you go and you look at your, uh, your iodine, you will see it's now less than 70%. So it dropped quite a bit. Here's your iodine, 61, and it dropped quite a bit there. So your iodine is where it should be now. So if you're going to go and look at your linoleic and your linoleic acids, Here's your linoleic, linolenic, and the total of them together is only 11. So now it is much better. And if you go and you look at your graph here at the bottom, you will see it turned nice and green. I didn't even show it in, in, in the beginning. But okay, so the linoleic, linolenic um, are bound together with the iodine. If the one goes out of bound, then the other one is the others are also gonna go there. And yeah, you can actually have a look at your saturated, unsaturated fatty acids. Um, saturated are usually your um, butters and your fats and so on. And your unsaturated many times are your liquid oils. So if you see that your unsaturated is a bit high, um, just reduce your liquid oils and um, vice versa. So I hope that gave you an indication or where to um, get all the information, how to fix your recipe if you want to fix the recipe. Um, oh, something else, if you don't have, if you want to go buy something, um, an oil, you can here yeah, underneath the oils. Let me just show you again. Under number five here, if you go a little bit lower, you can say expand as well. This is a nice, nice feature. Um, here's the oils that I've selected in my recipe. I'm just going to take them out of here. And here yeah, you can get everything together on one page. So there's your cleansing, your long levity. There's your linoleic and your linoleic acids. So, um, yeah, they're all in alphabetical order. You can actually search for something here. You can say um, canola oil. And there you go. So now you can find it much easier. Okay, I hope this is going to give you some insight on where to find the information you need to reduce your dreaded oil in spots and to fix your recipes. Um, so you must keep well, keep safe, and may the trace be with you. I'll see you in the next video again. Thank you. Bye.